Dear student, welcome to this lesson. The topic of the lesson is the conditioning process in cohesionless soil that is at the base of a correct excavation process with an earth pressure balance tunnel boring machine. In this figure, the working scheme of an APB tunnel boring machine is as shown. The excavated soil, detached by the cutter-red tools, enters through the opening of the cutter-red itself in the pressure chamber, from where it is extracted using the screw conveyor. The screw conveyor discharges the muck on a conveyor belt that transports the muck outside the tunnel. In the chamber, the soil is pressurized and this pressure counterbalances both the natural soil and the water pressure, while in the screw conveyor there is a gradual reduction of the pressure to zero at the outlet of the screw conveyor itself. To guarantee an optimal working process, it is necessary that the excavated volume that enters in the chamber is always equal to the volume extracted from the screw conveyor. To correct manage this shortly described excavation process, the soil in the pressure chamber must have a plastic behavior with a pulpy consistency. This is obtained with the soil conditioning, that is to say by adding chemical products that are able to interact with the soil grains and that are able to change the soil properties. The conditioning agents can be injected ahead of the cutting head in the pressure chamber and along the screw conveyor. The main objectives of the soil conditioning in APB tunneling are to guarantee a uniform distribution of the pressure in the chamber that is the key aspect to guarantee the control of the underground stability, to control the flow of the excavated material through the cutter red and in the screw conveyor, to reduce the friction forces in the bulk chamber, to control the water inflow thanks to the reduction of the soil permeability, to create the plug in the screw conveyor, to reduce the wear of all the mechanical parts of the machine that are in contact with the soil, to allow an easy spoiling handling. And finally, when the, we are tunneling in clay, to prevent the stickness of the clay on the mechanical parts and to avoid that the excavated clay will reconstruct as a mass in the bulk chamber. The most frequently used products for soil conditioning are foam, that is the key product and uh, is the one usually applied in cohesionless soil. Long chain polymers to improve the foam bubbles stability and to improve the, mass, the mac quality, mainly when a lot of water is present in the soil. Anti-clogging, lubricating agent and dispersing agents to avoid amalgamation and stickness of the clay. Abrasion preventers to reduce the wear of the metallical part bentonite slurry, filler, that is to say a slurry of fine grains of soil to change the soil grain size distribution. And finally, water, to change the natural water content of the soil to have a better combination with the foam. In this short video, you can see the effect of foam conditioning of a sand and gravel. It is possible to observe the behavior of this new material when it drops in the tank. This change of behavior depends on the bubbles that are in the intergranular voids, as can be seen in the picture. The foam bubbles fill the intergranular voids and their interaction with the water and the grains change the global mechanical and rheological behavior of the soil. Foam is produced by mixing the surfactant agents with the water, fast creating the generation fluid. Then this fluid is mixed with high pressure air in a device able to create a turbulence. Therefore, it is produced foam. The average composition of a standard foam is water ranging from 5 to 10 percent of the foam with a surfactant and agent percentage of the, in the generation fluid that is ranging between 0.8 percent to 5 percent depending, obviously, of the, on the type of used product. And finally, the remain part is air. The design parameters of soil conditioning with foam are foam expansion ratio, 
that represent the expansion of the foam with reference to the generation fluid volume. If this volume is low, this means that the foam is wet. That is to say that a lot of generation fluid is present in the foam. While if this value is high, the producer foam is dry. That is to say there is more air in the foam. You can use uh, dry or, what, or wet foam depending on the type of, uh, of the water present in the soil. Foam injection ratio that represents the volume of the foam injected in the soil during the excavation. These uh, two parameters should be assessed before starting the excavation with a proper laboratory study. The design process of soil conditioning is represented in this scheme. It is obtained by three different steps. The first step starts with the geomechanical and geotechnical characterization of the soil properties and through laboratory tests the needed amount of conditioning agents is assessed. This picture reports an example of possible conditioning products that can be used with different grind size distribution of the soil. For example, considering cohesionless soil, sand and silty sand, foam is the most frequently used additive. The second step requires an environmental characterization of the muck. It needs to be environmentally compatible with the laws and regulation in force. Both the conditioning agents as pure product and the conditioned soil must be tested. The goal of this step is to assess that the user conditioning agents are environmentally friendly and that when this agent is added to the soil, it is compatible with the environmental threshold values. Finally, the last step is carried out during the tunnel excavation. It is always necessary to carry out a control of the MAC properties during excavation. Due to the natural variability of soil properties, this changing can affect the forecasted conditioning process carried out in the laboratory. This last aspect is particularly critical when mixed phases are present and are to be faced during the tunneling process. The most frequently used laboratory tests for the condition and soil assessment is slump test. This test is popular thanks to its simplicity that permit it to be used both in the laboratory and on the machine. A conventional slump cone standard as for concrete is used. Values of cone fall between 100 mm and 200 mm are considered as optimal. The following measures are carried out when this procedure is used. To measure the cone fall height and to observe the final consistency of the mix. This is an example of the conditioning from a granular soil by adding a volume of foam of 20% and, uh, to the soil and a volume of water of 10%. You can observe the result in terms of an homogeneous mass and with a good cone fall. It is important to understand that for the same soil, a suitable conditioning depends not only on the foam content, but on a combination of the water present in the soil and the foam content. If we have too much water and foam, the conditioned soil is too fluid. If we have too much foam and not enough water, the material is not properly conditioned. Only a good combination of water and foam content give a good result, as you can see in the central part of the scheme. In this scheme is also possible to see an assessment chart for the slump test. It is possible to see the different behavior between a too dry soil and a too wet soil. When a too wet material is obtained, it has a good property as far as the APB process considered but is not good for MAC management, both with the conveyor belt transportation and also to be charged on the surface transportation outside the tunnel. It is therefore clear that for a correct assessment, it is necessary to define an average behavior. That is to say, a material with a good plastic and pulpy behavior. In conclusion, 
it is important to remember that as far as the research is considered, more possible tests have been proposed by different laboratories and research centers. But until today, no standard or regulation has been defined yet.